agents come to me and they're like, I haven't sold it. It's been four months and I haven't hit my first sale yet. And they're giving me all this, you know, negativity and all this. And I'm like, it took me eight months to make my first sale. And you're, you're crying. You're crying and complaining after three months, four months in the business. Here's the thing. Anybody that's listening to this, you're trying to succeed. You're trying to figure this whole real estate thing out. You know that if you're a worker, you know if you've got it. People that have it, they know they have it. I knew I had it, right? What is it? It is it. Like I knew that I was going to work hard and figure it out. Nothing yeah. was going to stop me from figuring it out. You that know? So like, inside you. Here's the thing. You don't have to tell winners how to win, okay? They know how to win. They know they're going to win and they're going to do whatever they have to do to win, okay? The loser or the people who don't win or the people who aren't just aren't going to make it, they know that they're not going to make it. <laughs> like they'll tell you, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm, you know, and it's like, for me, I just try to kind of share my story. Hey, you know, listen, the winners are going to win and, and, the, and the, and the other people aren't, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, nothing yeah. I'm going to say is going to change, you know, the trajectory, you know, if you know you're a winner, then get in there and win, right? Here's the problem. I think where it all kind of breaks down is nobody's patient anymore. Nobody really wants that process part. They don't want that journey part. You know, you need to laugh at that. You need to, you need that. Need, you need to get a kick out of the journey part of this, you know, the, the process of it, how long it really takes. Agents come to me and they're like, it's been four months and I haven't hit my first sale yet. And they're giving me all this, you know, negativity and all this. And I'm like, it took me eight months to make my first sale. And you're, you're crying. You're crying and complaining after three months, four months in the business, you know, and you're comparing yourself to everybody else. Stop comparing yourself to all these other agents who have more experience or have better circumstances. Who cares? We got to be the best us that we can be and just compete with yourself every day and quit making excuses, you know, and quit crying because it isn't happening as quick as you want it to, man. Trust me, bro. There's a lot of things that I want to succeed that I have a goal wise over the next three to five years that are massive situations that sure, I'd love to just wake up tomorrow and all that has already come true. But the fact is, is it's not and it's not going to. You can't go to sleep a 10 year old and then wake up the next day a 20 year old. That has never happened in the history of the world. Okay. You got to go through 10 and a half. You got to go through 11. You got to go through 12, 15, 16, 18, and then 20. And then 20. That's so true. So, so now you've gone through it. You found someone that's kind of showing you the ropes in the office. And you just, you just mentioned there, it took you eight months to get your first sale. So we already know you were falling flat in after the first 30 days, but you, you, you after the first 30 days, I went right back to the roof. Right. I was like, okay, dad, I'm back from retirement. Like, where's that Jersey? Oh, okay. like, wow. that Jersey? I'm back to the roof. Right. So, so I hopped back on the roof, man. I was like, Oh, I'm not going to sit here and not make any money. Are you kidding me? Right. That's yeah. not me. No way, no how, no, no, sir. So I got back on the roof. I'm roofing houses and doing real estate on the side now. So now I'm trying to figure out real estate on the side, roofing all day, doing real estate in the evenings or on the weekends or whenever I'm not roofing houses. So that that was my first eight months. And it took me eight, those eight months to get to the first sale. So if you can imagine a 20 year old, right, who wants everything right now, eight months is an eternity for you to be working on a roof every day, knowing that you don't want to do this anymore, knowing that, you know, you, you, you want to sell that first property. It's nowhere in sight. You know, eight months is an eternity. So, and you know what's so funny? I can't even lie. My first deal was my grandmother's condo. Hey, <laughs> where did you get it? Where are you going to take it? But what's so cool? What's so cool is, what's so cool is, is I closed on my grandmother's condo and I got my first listing and, and those both closed on the same day. I got paid on two deals on the same day. Lovely. When I hit those first two deals right there, same day, I got off. Who that was, was the, the day. Who was the second client? So the one was the family. So everyone's going to- Second oh, right, client was a Gulf front condo and it came from a letter. What was the letter you were sending? I sent a handwritten letter just asking him if he wanted to sell his condo. Did you hand select that particular unit or is this going out to the building or how, Went out how to the building sent okay. out to the whole building yeah Got it. Okay. Sent out to the whole building and he called and it was easy you know like i i talked to a lot of property owners during that eight months you know trying to make stuff happen sure and nothing ever happened and then this guy called 
and said, yeah, we're going to, we want to sell it. And I was like, okay, well, I think, you know, maybe this is a good price. Or he's like, maybe he set the price or I set the price. I can't remember. I was like, all right, well, you know, we'll probably have to list it, you know, to make that happen. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's do it. And I was, I was thinking to myself, oh no, <laughs> this dude wants to do a deal with me. I don't know what to do next. <laughs> like, oh man, somebody finally he just needs to sell houses. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. wow, this is really happening. It was, And so I did the listing, we got it, it sold quick. And nice. that was really cool, man. You know, what's cool is after about a year and a half in the business, I learned a lot from that moment I sold my first property to the year and a half mark in my, in my, in my business because I was selling about two a month. So by that time, I'd sold a good 15 or so properties. And I look back at those eight months that I sold nothing, right? I look back at those eight months that I sold nothing and I realized all these deals that I could have had during those eight months. Like I didn't know at the time because I was inexperienced, but there were all these moments where I was talking to a seller, whereas if I would have talked to that same seller in the same circumstances a year and a half later, I would have known exactly how to close the deal. But I didn't know, like, you know, people will give you signals, you know, that they want to do stuff or this or that. And I wasn't experienced enough to pick up on those signals that my clients were giving me, you know, like I, I could have easily said, well, let's move forward here or let's do that. And, or I think we should do this. And I could have easily done, you know, maybe like two or three or four deals during that eight month period. But that's part of the learning process. You yeah. know, and you I gotta... think that, that part of it comes with the, when you're not just like transactional, but you're like advisory and you definitely need, and, and it's what Ricky's saying is you need experience under your belt because sometimes they don't, the person speaking to you, giving you the signals, doesn't even know they're giving you the signal. Yeah. And, and you have to be able to decipher it. It's like if somebody comes up to me and I have a new conversation or they tell me they just had a baby, I'm, my brain automatically goes to, I wonder if their house is big enough. I wonder <laughs> if they have a bedroom ready for the baby. Experience is definitely needed to to gravitate some opportunities to come to you. Well, like for example, this lady called me on a direct mail and she was calling me and she was asking about price and you know, she was talking about selling and stuff. And I forget how the conversation went and what I said, but I do remember it was just kind of like, okay, well, um, just, it was real open-ended, you know, like I'll call you back, I'll check back in with you kind of deal, or let me know if you decide this or that or yeah, something, yeah. you know, it, it, it was something along those lines. You were lines. leaving it on them to make the decision. Kind, kind of. Of, kind of, kind of like, I'm like, I'll call you back and check in on you or something when really the conversation should have went like, okay, when can I see it so that I can price it so that we can get it sold. And then I remember that property. I remember what condo it was. And I think I remember the lady's name, you know, this, which is crazy. But I, I remember that that listing came up on the market. Um, I don't know if it was like a week later or a month later, I forget what it was, but I saw it come on the market. And I was thinking, man, you know, I just talked to her. It's one of those deals, you know, when you're new agent and you're like, I just talked to her, you know, like oh, yeah. And now here Those it is. Burners, they burn with, with another agent. And it's like, man, you know, what did I do wrong? Or, you know, where, where, you know, where, you know, and, and I, I didn't know at that point, but then, like I say, after that year and a half mark, I look back and I remember that moment. I'm like, I could have literally listed that condo right there that day.